In this part, we're going to talk about the DMA and the DMA mux of the STM32G0. And then we'll do a lab using the DMA. The direct memory access or DMA embedded in the STM32G0 microcontroller is used to provide high speed data transfer between peripherals and memory, memory and peripherals, and also between memory and memory. So without the need of the CPU. So then the CPU can be used to do other operations. So the DMA channels can access any memory map location, including AHB peripherals, like CRC, AHB memories, like the SRAM, or APB peripherals, like the USART. The DMA is a master on the AHB bus, so it offers flexible configuration, also provides hardware and software priority management. There are different transfer modes, peripheral to peripheral, peripheral to memory, memory to peripheral, and memory to memory. In terms of application benefits, so first of all, the DMA supports different peripherals like timers, ADC, and communication peripherals. This will offload the CPU load and permit a simple integration. Two units are in charge of handling DMA transfers, the DMA request multiplexer, DMA MUX, and the DMA controller. The DMA controller transfers data from a source address to a destination address and manages the priority between the channels. The DMA MUX enables the user to map requests to channels. It also handles triggers and synchronizations. If we compare to the stm 2 F0, we will see that the main differences are basically that the F0 had two different DMAs, whereas the G0 has one DMA. The DMA features are the same, but the main difference is that the G0 embeds a DMA MUX, whereas you know, the F0 doesn't have the DMA MUX. The DMA MUX request multiplexer allows routing a DMA request line between STM32G0's peripherals and its DMA controllers. The routing function is ensured by a programmable multi-channel DMA request line multiplexer. Each channel selects a unique DMA request line unconditionally or synchronously with events from its DMA MUX synchronization inputs. The DMA MUX may also be used as a DMA request generator from programmable events on its input trigger signals. The DMA MUX is used to map the peripheral request onto seven available DMA channels. This mapping is programmable. Moreover, the DMA MUX embeds a four channel request generator that converts triggers into DMA requests. The following triggers are supported the 16 external interrupts, low power timers 1 and 2 timeouts, timer 14 output compare, and 4 events generated by the DMA MUX itself. Let's recap the features of the DMA and DMA MUX inside the sm 2 G0. So let's start with the DMA MUX. So the DMA MUX has 57 peripheral requests mapped to 7 DMA channels, 4 request generator channels, 23 trigger inputs, and 23 synchronization inputs. Now for the DMA features, it offers seven channels. Now that we have learned a lot about the DMA, we can start a lab using the DMA. The objective of this lab is to open the stm 42 CubeMX project IOC file from a stm 42 G0 library example, so a DMA example, and we're going to review the configuration in stm 42 CubeMX. Then we're going to run the Kyle Macrovision file, so the ARM MDK project associated to the IOC file. So this example will be a DMA transfer memory to memory from flash to internal SRAM. Okay, first we're going to close Kyle Macrovision 5 and STM32 CubeMX if they open. Then we're going to open a Windows Explorer to go to the following location. So this location is basically uh, on your user account in the stm 2 cube directory repository then the name of the library so which is g0 then the version number projects projects for the nucleo board that we're using so this is the nucleo g071 rb examples dma and then dma flash to ram 
So once you open this, you will find you know, the IOC file and the projects in this location. So we're going to do that. First, I'm going to close Kyle Microvision and close stm 2 cubamx Now we're going to find the DM example. So I'm going to go to users, st, stm 2 cube repository, STM32G0 1.2.0. It could be different on yours. Huh? That's the version that I have so far. You could have a different version. Now I'm going to the project. Look for the Nucleo G071RB. That's the one we're using. Example. And DMA. Then DMA flash to RAM. So here we can see that we have the IOC file, so the stm 2 cubemx project, and also different uh, projects for different IDs. So here the MDK arm that we'll be using. So we're going to open this IOC file, so just double click on it, and this is going to open stm 2 cubemx with the configuration for this project example. So I'm going to double click on this IOC file to open the stm 2 cubemx project. So once stm 2 cubemx is open, please go to the system view. So here, click on system view, and then DMA. Now we're going to study the DMA configuration. So to do this, so in DMA1, so in the configuration, click DMA1, then DMA1, click on MEM to MEM, and we're going to look at the channels used. So the channel used is DMA1, channel 1. The direction is memory to memory, and priority low. The mode is normal, and we increment both the source and the memory address after each transfer. For the data width of the transfers, they will be worldwide, so 32 bit. Okay, we're going to expand a little bit here to see better. All right, in the configuration of DMA, DMA1, let's look at the DMA request that was configured for this example. So this is called mem to mem, so memory to memory. This is DMA1 channel 1, memory to memory with a low priority. Both incrementation for the source and the destination address and the data which is 32-bit, uh, so worldwide. And the mode is normal. Now if we look at the NVIN configuration, so same thing, you will go to system view, then click on NVIC. So we should see that the DMA1 channel 1 interrupt is enabled, like this. So it should be checked in the system view. Click on NVIC. And we're going to check that the DMA1 channel 1 interrupt is enabled. And this is the case. OK, now we have reviewed the stm 2 CubeMX project and the configuration of the DMA for this uh, project. Now we're going to open the project uh, from the example, so the DMA example, uh, DMA flash to RAM. So as the name indicates, we're going to do a transfer from flash to RAM using the DMA, so memory to memory, as we saw in the configuration before. So what you're going to do in your Explorer window, you're going to go, so we were here at DMA flash to RAM, and now we're going to click on uh, the directory MDK arm. So when you double click on MDK arm, enter this directory, you will find a project for Kyle Microvision. So the project is named UV X. So double click on this DMA underscore flash to RAM dot UV X, and that will open Kyle Microvision 5. From the Explorer window, I'm going to go to MDK arm directory and then click on DMA underscore flash to ram.uvprojects, so double click on it, and that will open KMacCovision 5. So if we open main.c, we're going to look for the function mx underscore dma underscore init. So this is the function that will uh, initialize the DMA and look at the different parameters. As, as you can see, this is exactly the same configuration in cubemx that we saw before. So this project was generated you know, from uh, the IUC file that we uh, checked just before. And then we just need to add 
the application code on top of it. I'm going to expand this, open main.c, scroll down and look for the function that is mx dma init. So, as you can see, the configuration is exactly the same as in stm 2 cubemx. So DMA1 channel 1, memory to memory, uh, the incrementation for both, you know, the peripheral and the memory, so the destination and the source. Uh, the world transfers are worldwide, DMA normal, priority low. Then also, the interrupt for the DMA channel 1, DMA1 channel 1, has been enabled. We're going to build the project like we do, we know how to do it now using this icon and then once the code is built we're going to enter the debug session with the d we're going to build the project so pressing on the build or f7 once it's built let's enter debug session so with the icon d start debug session or control f5 we can now add two variables to the watch windows so to do this first look for this variable which is the source buffer so this is the buffer that will be located in flash. So this is called ASRC, so source, constant, so C-O-N-S-T, underscore buffer. So this is going to be located in the flash. So what we're going to do is uh, once you find the declaration of this uh, buffer, so it should be at the beginning of the file, like around line 51, what you want to do is uh, double click on the name, right click, and then add, you know, this variable to the watch one window. Then we're going to do the same thing with the destination buffer. So a dst underscore buffer. So this is the buffer that will be located in uh, the RAM, basically. And we're going to transfer this buffer to this buffer using the DMA. So please add also ADST underscore buffer to the same, you know, watch one window. So we're going to monitor these two variables during the execution of the code. Now let's add the two variables. So this is the first one right there. You see around line 51 for me. So for the version that I have. So select the name, right click, then add to watch one window now it's added here same thing for the destination buffer so we're going to add it also okay and it's here because you can see now our two buffers are in the watch one window now we're going to add two breakpoints in main.c so the first breakpoints we're going to add so to add the breakpoints you will go to the line where you want, you know, to add the breakpoints, go to the column right here and just click with your mouse. That will add, you know, like a red dot like this. So that's adding a breakpoints in kind micro region five. So once, so we're going to add one here. So this is just before starting the DMA transfer. The second one will be right when, you know, the transfer has been complete. So we're going to look for this, you know, uh, test right there. And in, you know, the line transfer complete detected equals zero. So that's where we reinitialize the variable that was set to say that the transfer was complete, which was set in the interrupt, you know, of the DMA1 channel one. So let's scroll down in main.c. So right before starting the DMA transfer. So this is a function that will start the DMA transfer. So this says that, you know, this is for DMA1 channel 1. This is the source. So this is the basically the variable that we are watching here that is located in the flash. And here the destination is the buffer that is located in the RAM. Okay, so we're going to add a breakpoint right there. So go to the column right here and then left click. Now we want to add another breakpoint. So we go scroll down. So once, you know, 
this is, you know, the transfer has been complete. We're going to add another breakpoint right here. So please add, you know, to the wine above, like around 161. You can add, you know, like a breakpoint right here. So left click on the column next to the line number. So if you want to know where transfer complete detected is set to one, so you have to scroll down and look for this function that is transfer complete, which is a callback function. So called from the ISR of DMA1 channel one. So here, as you can see, transfer complete detected equal one. Please now run the code. So remember this icon to run or F5. So you're going to hit the first breakpoint. So just before starting the transfer. So just before and also when it hits this first breakpoint, check the destination buffer. You will see that it should be full of zero. So it's initialized to zero. So for now it's empty. So check this. We're going to check this. Now can run the code. So press on run. See, it will hit the first breakpoints just before the transfer of the DMA. We're going to verify that the destination buffer is empty. Okay, so it's full of zero, as we can see. Press run again. So now the code is going to hit the second breakpoints. And when it reaches the second breakpoints, what we should see is that the destination buffer will be filled by all the values from the source buffer. Now I'm going to continue the code until it reach the second breakpoint. And as we can see now, the destination buffer is filled with the same values as, you know, the source buffer. So this is the source. And this is the destination. So we have done a transfer from flash to RAM. So from this buffer located in flash to this buffer located in RAM using the DMA.